class is now in session. I'm Professor Hockey, and today we'll be discussing the final 30 games of the season for the San Jose Sharks. The Sharks will be returning from the All-Star break, or I guess I shouldn't say returning because the All-Star game was in San Jose, but they'll be playing their first game back from the All-Star game February 2nd. They'll be hosting the Arizona Coyotes before they head on to a four-game road trip through Western Canada, uh, you know, center Western Canada. The first game being against the Winnipeg Jets, and I have circled this one, as I have many other games, as a very important one or a very uh, one to look forward to, I guess I could say, just because how these t- the previous matchup between these two teams went. Uh, the Sharks, most agree, outplayed the Winnipeg Jets, but ended up on the losing end of that one. Also, the fact that if the Sharks are to make it to the third round of the Stanley Cup playoffs, it's, you know, very likely that the Sharks actually face off against the Winnipeg Jets during that conference finals matchup and so this could be a good one to be a measuring stick kind of game to see if the Sharks can actually get a win versus the Jets and not just outplay but still lose. Then they'll place off against the Calgary Flames in Calgary, also a very important game, or at least a very uh, interesting game to have already had circled on the calendar just because of how the previous matchup went between these two teams as well. It was an 8-5 Calgary victory, but it wasn't so much the score as it was the physicality and you know the rough stuff that happened during this game, uh, especially Sam Bennett's uh, late hit onto Shemek. 30 seconds to go in the third period when the Flames already have a three-goal lead. So we'll see how the Sharks respond, if it'll be physically or if it'll be sort of just by playing their game and taking the two points. Sharks will finish out that road trip with games against the Oilers and the Canucks before coming back home and having a three-game homestand with the first hosting the Washington Capitals, former Stanley Cup champions. Also, a pretty exciting one just because of how the previous meeting went between these two teams. The Sharks won 7-6 include in overtime, including a game-tying goal in the last second. We'll see if either team decides to show up and actually play some defense or if we're going to continue to have open fire onto both goaltenders. The Sharks will then also host Vancouver and then Boston for the first time this season. The Sharks will head back onto the road for a four-game road trip after that with a game against the Pittsburgh Penguins first, which will also be a very interesting one uh, just because of how the Sharks dominated the Penguins during their first meeting. We'll see if the Penguins get some revenge. It's sort of similar to how the Sharks uh, dominated the Lightning in their first meeting, but the Lightning showed up and played them hard in the second one. We'll see if the Penguins can follow suit or if the Sharks can control them. They'll then have games in Columbus and then Detroit before the trade deadline occurs. And then the final game of that road trip will be in Boston. The Sharks will then return home at the start of March for another four-game homestand. They'll face off against the Avalanche, the Blackhawks, the Canadians, and then the Blues before a quick road trip back-to-back against the Wild and then the Jets again. Before coming back home for a three-game homestand, they'll host the Florida Panthers. Sharks will be looking for revenge in that one. Then the Nashville Predators, which I have circled here as another interesting game just because of how the two previous matchups went. Uh, Very crazy, very exciting very nerve-wracking games against the Predators. The first one, of course, the Sharks trailed 4-2 by the end of the second period before scoring three third-period goals to win it 5-4. And in the second one, the Sharks led 3-0 by the end of the first period, then trailed 4-3 by the end of the second period before getting two uh, goals in quick succession in the third period to win that one 5-4. So we'll see if the third one is as exciting if the Predators will get some revenge or if the Sharks can sweep the season series against uh, one of the better teams in the Central Division, the Nashville Predators. The Sharks will then have their final game of that homestand against the Vegas Golden Knights, also a very important one, the third meeting between these two teams, or it will be the third meeting at that time, uh, about halfway through March with not a lot of games left. Uh, The Sharks will see how they match up against the Golden Knights. By then, it'll be more clear who the Sharks will be facing in the playoffs. It'll still probably be the Golden Knights, and so it'll be a very important measuring stick game when it occurs. The Sharks will then have a quick two-game road trip that's barely a road trip, really. They won't even be leaving this time zone. They won't even be leaving uh, the state of California. They'll face off against the Kings and the Ducks before coming back home. They'll host the Red Wings and the Blackhawks, two pretty easy games, at least in comparison to the final two of that homestand, the Golden Knights and the Flames in back-to-back. So it's going to be two huge games. It'll be at the point where the Sharks only have five games left of the season. The Pacific Division, if it's not already basically set, it'll most likely be set by then. At the moment, the Golden Knights are the third place team. The Flames are the first place team. So this is, those are going to be two huge games, not necessarily for the regular season, although with how close the standings are between the Sharks and the Golden Knights, those could be two huge games points-wise, but also just sort of as a message towards the playoffs because it's likely the Sharks face off, as I've said, against the Golden Knights in the first round, and it's likely the Sharks in the second round will face off against the Flames. 
The Sharks will then have a quick two-game road trip as uh, part of their last few games. They'll uh, go to Vancouver and then Edmonton, and then their final game of the season will be hosting the Colorado Avalanche in San Jose. The Sharks, during these final 30 games, will be playing 16 of those at home, 14 on the road, so a pretty good balance there. They'll have three back-to-backs. That's the Minnesota-Winnipeg, the Los Angeles-Anaheim, and then the Vegas-Calgary. Then they'll have uh, 16 playoff teams they'll see during these final 13 games, so also pretty balanced with an average point total of about 55 points. That would, in the Western Conference, a team with 55 points would be a wild card spot or possibly third in the Central. A team in the Eastern Conference with 55 points wouldn't even be a playoff team, so not the hardest schedule, but also not completely easy. On to the offense. Up to this point, it is Brent Burns leading the way. He, uh, along with most of these players, has 52 games played Meyer has 49 and then Hurdle and Carlson both have 47 Burns sitting at 55 points at the moment Couture 47 Meyer with 46 then Pavelski and Hurdle both with 45 Carlson with 43 and Kane with 42 so three players above 40 including one who is above 50 at the moment so a huge offensive season for the Sharks in general they don't have anyone who's sort of a breakout star in like the 70 point range like you know that the, the Flames have with Goodrow or the, the Oilers have with McDavid but they've got a very good balanced attack that helped them get, I think, third place uh, in the league so far with goals four per game. Uh, Panning out for the rest of the season, uh, Brent Burns looks on pace to get 87 points, then Couture at 74, Meyer also at 74, Pavelski at 71, Hurdle at 74 because his point per game pace is higher than Pavelski, then uh, Carlson with 70, and Evander Kane with 66. So the Sharks would have six players above 70 points including one above 80 which would be huge offensive numbers I doubt that ends up occurring because I'm not sure how common that is I'm not even sure how many times that's happened since the lockout if it has happened before would be interesting to know but I I would be more uh, you know I would be more expecting maybe four of four to five of these players to get at the very least 70 points in terms of goals it is Pavelski leading the way with 27 that puts him on pace for 43 then Hurdle's got 22 who puts him on pace for 36 then it is Kane with 21 putting him on pace for 33 and then Meyer and Couture both tied at 19 putting Couture on pace for 30 and Meyer on pace for 31 because he has three less games so it's a huge offensive season for the San Jose Sharks these final 30 games that are coming down are not too difficult they're not too easy but they also shouldn't really have much of an effect on how the Sharks are to make the playoffs because they have a massive cushion of over a dozen points above the Vancouver Canucks who are the fourth place in the Pacific Division so while these 30 games might not be super nerve-wracking in terms of playoff position for the San Jose Sharks or whether or not they'll make the playoffs it'll still be some very important games some very key games against some of the top teams not only in the Pacific Division like the Golden Knights and the Flames but some of the top teams in the league itself class dismissed